Hey, what's going on YouTube? Welcome back to another video. Uh, let me go ahead and get started off by saying today is October the 24th and uh, I, I haven't made any videos. Uh, it's been quite some time since I uploaded a video. So uh, if you're new to my channel, I'm a full-time reseller. I've been buying and selling stuff uh, for about 15 years. If, you, if you're a follower of mine and you're sub already subscribed to the channel, welcome back for another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking a, a little bit about uh, what's been going on the last couple of months, uh, why I haven't been uploading, things that I've been doing, uh, share a couple stories with you uh, just to give you kind of a backstory of where I've been and uh, where we're going to go with the channel from here on out. Also, uh, we're going to be talking about buying and selling jewelry later on in the video. I kind of wanted to make sure that this just wasn't a video talking uh, you know, nonsense, that I actually wanted to give you some sort of content. Hopefully somebody will be able to learn something uh, from this video. So if you're looking to uh, get into costume jewelry, or it, it could be gold, it could be silver, uh, anything pretty much. If you're looking to get into you know buying and selling jewelry, uh, maybe it's something that you've always wanted to do. I would hope that if you're a reseller that you would want to know how to uh, you know effectively go out there and find you know gold or silver or jewelry like watches, earrings, bracelets. Uh, even costume jewelry can be worth money. Uh, but I'm always out there looking for gold and silver just because it's more valuable. But I also deal in uh, costume jewelry and pretty much anything. Watches, it could be new or vintage, it just all depends. So uh, let me go ahead and talk a little bit about uh, you know what's been going on. So for the past couple of months, I've been extremely busy. I just recently just got done with a huge deal. Uh, about two months ago, I purchased an entire... Uh, it's kind of a small warehouse. I wouldn't consider it a huge warehouse, but it was uh, all the way in Savannah, Georgia. So, um, you know, I do I do buy stuff all the time. I usually don't travel that far, especially when it's a bunch of stuff. But it was such a good deal. The guy ended up sending me uh, pictures, and pretty much the contents of the warehouse was the remains of a uh, like a souvenir shop that was in downtown Savannah, Georgia. So if you're familiar with that area. Um, you know, it's known for having tons of little shops downtown. And uh, this guy owned a store there from like 1992 to like 2009. So uh, after he closed the store down, he had tons of like old new stock items, but most of it was really cheap items, things that, you know, you buy when you go on vacation, lots of small Chotsky types, you know, items, uh, t-shirts, hats, combs, brushes, door magnets, all of that stuff. I mean, we're talking thousands and thousands of items. I didn't even get a good count of that stuff. Uh, I didn't even want that stuff. The only reason that I purchased this warehouse full of items is because it had four vintage Coke machines and two vintage Pepsi machines. Uh, that was the only thing that I really wanted, and I knew the value of those items, so I pretty much purchased the entire warehouse just so I could get those items and uh, sell those items and then make my money back and, and some profit. So uh, what I ended up doing uh, because of the warehouse being located in Savannah, Georgia and I'm located in Gainesville, Florida, uh, I ended up just driving up there every now and then, uh, probably two to three times a week. And uh, I, I basically just liquidated all of the uh, smaller items, boxes and boxes, I would probably say there was well over a million items. I mean, we're talking, you know, a huge warehouse with just boxes stacked all the way to the roof of just really cheap low-end items, things that I didn't want. I didn't want to have to bring those items back. I didn't want to have to pay to rent a truck in a, in a uh, you know, a trailer. I didn't want to have to pay to do any of that. I didn't want to have to store those items. Uh, so I wanted to get rid of those items as fast as possible. I talk about this a lot in some of my previous videos, uh, making smart decisions and learning you know, how to kind of maneuver when you get yourself into a position, uh, you know, where you're buying a large amount of stuff. Being smart and playing the game uh, correctly is the, the, the best strategy. And uh, I've used this exact strategy numerous times when buying big, you know, storage lockers or warehouses or even storage units. You know, you, you want to focus on a few items uh, and try to make your money off of those items. And that's the whole thing when you're going into a situation like this, you know, I don't know the value of all of those items in those boxes. I wasn't going to spend, you know, a week just going through every one of those boxes to try to get a good evaluation 
of you know how many items there are, how many, how much money I'm gonna make. So basically, what I did is when I went there to view the stuff, I tried to pick out some of the big ticket items that I know is valuable and uh, I know that I'm gonna be able to sell quite easily and then I base my offer on what I'm gonna pay for all of this stuff on those few items and so what that does is it puts you in a position to where everything else is just gravy whatever I made selling all of those items was pure profit because I knew that I already made my money back selling the, the, the uh, coke machines and so that's exactly what I did I paid uh, I paid 4500 for everything, which is a good deal. I ended up selling uh, the three, I sold, there was four uh, Coca-Cola machines. I ended up selling three of them. Uh, those were in the worst condition to a local buyer in Savannah uh, that restores the Coke machines. He gave me $1,000 each. So that was uh, $3,000. And then the other Coke machine, I actually transported back to Gainesville uh, it was in way better condition. It was uh, all original. It had, you know, it never had been restored. And I ended up selling that one for thirty-five hundred dollars to a local collector uh, that I know that collects Coca-Cola items. And then the other two uh, Coke machines, uh, I actually just sold to somebody in uh, Savannah. I listed them locally on Facebook Marketplace and Craigslist. And it took about uh, maybe four or five days, and somebody came and picked those up. Those sold for four hundred a piece. They were in really bad condition. So all in all, it was a it was a really good deal. Uh, all of the other items, the lower end items, I actually just got rid of fairly cheap. I actually sold a little bit, you know, to one person, a little bit to another person. It took me about two weeks to liquidate all of that stuff, and uh, it worked out great. But it did take up a lot of my time. It took up a lot of my resources, my energy, you know, driving to and from Savannah. But for the money that I made, it was well worth my time. And uh, that's one of the big reasons why, you know, I haven't uploaded any videos. I've just been, you know, extremely busy. Anyways, let's get down to the nit and grit of this video. Let's talk about buying some jewelry. So I'm not really going to go into depth today. I'm actually going to be making a totally different video, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about vi uh, jewelry right now just to get you ready for the next video. So if you're watching this video and you're actually interested in learning how to uh, go out there and find jewelry, buy jewelry, and not lose money, then make sure that you subscribe to the channel. Make sure that you uh, put turn on your uh, notifications so that when I upload the video, uh, with hopefully within the next few days, you'll be notified and you'll be able to watch that video immediately. If you're not really interested and you already know enough about jewelry and all that good stuff, then this is most likely not something that you're gonna wanna watch, so you can just go ahead and cut the video off now. Uh, but if you just wanna watch for, for whatever reason, that's fine as well. All right, so let's go. So I get asked this question all the time. I'm always you know, asked, hey, you know, how did you learn so much about jewelry? How do I get into you know, buying and selling jewelry? You know, most of the times, uh, th you know, this question is always coming from a fellow reseller, somebody who has already been reselling for quite some time, but they just don't mess with jewelry because they just don't know enough about jewelry. They don't really have the knowledge or the education. And uh, it's one of those uh, niches where it's kind of intimidating because you don't want to make a mistake. You don't want to go to an estate sale and, and pay $150 for you know, some gorgeous necklace that is uh, 18 karat gold hoping to make a couple hundred dollars on that necklace and it turns out that you bought a fake item. And so that's why people are intimidated about jewelry and also because there is so much fakes out there. There's tons of fakes, there's tons of people trying to sell knockoff items and it's a little different than anything else. You're gonna actually have to learn uh, how to identify a real item. You're gonna have to learn how to test an item. You're gonna have to learn how to um, you know, basically just determine if an item is possibly real without doing much of anything. And that's the hardest part, and that's mostly what we're gonna be talking about today. We're gonna be talking about the basics of you know getting into the jewelry business, buying and selling it, and determining uh, if it's real or has the possibility of being real because in our, in most of my situations, if I go to an estate sale or yard sale or uh, if I'm at a flea market, uh, most of the times I don't really have enough time to, to you know, 
uh, fully test an item or whip out my acid and start scratching items, people are not going to like that. And most of the times you don't want to do that because if you do that, say you're at a yard sale and you're looking through a small jewelry box of jewelry and you see a few items that you think is real, if you if you were to pull out your your diamond tester or or you were to pull out your gold testing kit most likely it's going to tell those people that that item is real and they're just going to take that item and they're going to say oh no we don't want to sell this we're sorry i've actually had that done to me uh, not because I was trying to test it just because I pulled my loop out and started looking at the item then the woman immediately asked me what are you looking for what exactly are you trying to find out and I, I explained to her that I was just trying to find the maker's mark on the necklace and once I said that she said well can I see and then she looked at it and then her husband looked at it and then I asked her how much and then she said I'm sorry we really don't want to sell this uh, and that was the you know the end of it and that happens quite often so when you're at a yard sale or an estate sale or anywhere for instance you don't want to draw too much attention to what you're trying to buy but you still don't want to buy the item so I'm not telling you to go out to a yard sale pick up a box of costume jewelry and just because you see a, go, a gold tone item in there you automatically buy it hoping that something in it is real because if you do that without knowing that you're going to be able to make your money back you're just going to be constantly buying costume jewelry boxes full of costume jewelry and you're just going to never be able to make your money and you're going to waste money so what you need to do is the first thing that you have to do is you need to get the bare essentials of buying jewelry uh, kind of in your head you need to understand the very basics and that is what we're gonna talk about right now. Okay, the first thing that we're gonna talk about is an item that you need to make sure that you have. It's an item that I'm holding right here in my hand. I don't know if the camera's gonna actually, you know, focus on this item, but uh, this is a jeweler's loop. This is just a little magnifying glass. You can buy this item at pretty much any Walmart. Uh, any hobby store they sell them online I'll actually put a link down in the description of a good quality loop uh, they're fairly cheap you can probably get them for about four or five dollars you can get probably some cheaper ones on eBay but you really want a good quality one I think I paid probably ten bucks for this one uh, you just want to make sure that it's a decent one and these like you know because you're carrying them you know you're carrying these around all the time so if you buy a cheap one for three or four dollars most likely it's going to break within just a few days or a few weeks and then you're going to have to buy another one so why not just spend the 10 bucks 12 bucks whatever they cost and get a pretty decent quality one so this is the first thing that i would recommend to anybody that's looking to get into buying jewelry it doesn't matter if you're thinking about costume jewelry gold silver whatever watches you need a good loop so that you can identify items and that you can see the quality of items better than you could with your naked eye. So when you're looking at an item, uh, most of the times, especially when you're talking about precious metals like silver or gold, these items most of the times now are going to be marked on the inside of the item it doesn't matter if it's a ring a bracelet an earring a charm a necklace those items should have a maker's mark or a stamp on the clasp or in the inside of the ring and that's exactly what we're looking for when you see somebody with a loop looking at a piece of jewelry we're looking at the maker's mark we're trying to see if the item is actually real or fake and now the things that we're looking for are what they call metal marks or makers marks or stamps I mean people call them all sorts of things but uh, I'm gonna go through a list of common uh, marks that you're gonna see on the inside of precious metals like gold and silver uh, there's also a few other marks in here like platinum this is a very important mark because you would actually be shocked uh, to know that I find a lot of items at estate sales even when the people are known uh, dealers of gold and silver I still find items that are marked with these marks that they don't understand what those markings mean and then they end up selling me an item thinking it's a totally different item and it actually is a much valuable item which I have a uh, the item right here that I'm gonna actually show you as an example but let's go ahead and go through these marks 
Uh, these are going to be the most common marks that you're going to find on precious metal like gold and silver. Also, you can find it on white gold or yellow gold. Uh, 10K. So it's just going to be a one zero with a little K at the end, or it could be a capital K. That means it's 10 karat gold. Now that could be on white gold or yellow gold. 14K. That just means that it's 14 karat. 18 karat. 18 with a K at the end means it's 18 karat. 24 karat means it's 24 karat gold. Those are the most common marks that you're going to find on the inside of any jewelry that's actual gold. Now sometimes you can find items that will not have a mark and they will be real. Uh, just because it doesn't have a mark doesn't mean that it's automatically fake. But it is rare just because most jewelry is marked these days. But don't leave it out. I've, I've purchased plenty of rings that had absolutely no mark, but just by the, the way that it looked, the way that it was made, the quality of the item, I purchased it and definitely it turned out to be gold. Lots of jewelers that just work from their home that make uh, you know rings and bracelets and things and they're not really a business or they're not uh, you know licensed to put the markings on jewelry uh, they they will make things for friends and family and things of that nature and it just will be made out of gold but it just won't have any markings so let's move on to the next mark uh, these are some other marks that mean uh, the same thing as the markings that I just read off to you but they're just different. They're just marked different. So like 0.417, that means that it's 10 karat gold. 0.585, that means that it's 14 karat gold. 0 0.750, that means that it's 18 karat gold. And then 0.999. Now these markings are not that common, but I have seen them. So be on the lookout for those markings. Um, and, and you, you know, you never know though, even though an item is marked, it still could be fake just because it's marked. Doesn't mean that it's real. It just means that it's most likely more. It's, it's got more of a chance of being real than it does of being fake. And so that we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So, uh, the next one is, uh, P L A T that's the abbreviation for platinum. This is uh, a very, uh, I would consider it uncommon. I don't, I don't think I've ever purchased an item or seen an item that was marked P-L-A-T before. I have purchased an item that was marked P-T, and that also means platinum. But this one is the one that is the most crucial one because I believe that people get this one confused and or they just don't know what it means. And this is 900 or 950. If an item is marked 900 or 950, that means that item is platinum. Doesn't mean it's definitely platinum, but it does mean that that's the marking for platinum. And so this is the marking that I find quite often. Uh, and usually I find it on items that are being priced and sold as if it was silver. And so that's one really good tip for people. If you're looking to get into jewelry, make sure that you, you know, you're looking at the silver items. Uh, even if it's a tray of sterling silver items, go through each item because you never know when you're going to come across an item that's marked 900 or 950. And then you're buying a, an item that they priced probably low because sterling silver isn't that valuable. And you're able to buy it at those kinds of prices but in all actuality, it's actually a uh, platinum item. And I'm gonna use uh, this, this item right here as an example. This item was purchased uh, at an estate sale. It was uh, an estate sale that was run uh, by a company. I'm not gonna say the, uh, the company's name because it is a local estate sale company here in Gainesville. But this item was in the, uh, it was inside of a, a small glass case right there by the cash register. At first, I didn't pay it any attention because it looked just like every other vintage women's uh, wristwatch. But then uh, I decided to pick it up. And once I picked it up, I could feel that this watch, you know, weighed quite a bit more than I would have expected it to weigh. Um, most of the times, these little vintage uh, women's watches are usually gold filled or gold plated. But sometimes you'll find them and they'll be uh, 10 karat gold or 14 karat gold and sometimes 18 karat gold. It just all depends. But we're going to go more into depth uh, on the second video 
of you know where you're going to be able to find these makers marks on different items um you know like you know on rings most of the times the markings are on the inside of the ring on watches the markings are are mostly on certain you know certain areas on a watch we're not going to go into that right now that will be on the second video when i actually go in depth on all of the the um you know jewelry uh, buying processes and testing and makers marks and where to look for the makers marks and all of that good stuff will be on the second video So make sure you stick around but uh, anyways, so I picked up this item and it just felt really heavy so I pulled my loop out and uh, These people at this estate sale. They know me. They see me every weekend almost I know them by name. They know me by name. They know that I'm a dealer uh, so it doesn't really matter uh, that I'm showing the item attention because the item was already priced. It already had a price tag uh, sticking off the back. If it didn't have a price tag, I probably would have played it a little different. I wouldn't have showed it so much attention at first, but since it was already priced, I really didn't care. So I pulled my loop out and I started to look for a maker's mark. And I couldn't find one. And then finally, I lifted up the bracelet on one side and right there by the lug, I seen a small little mark and a uh, also, I think it's, if I can remember correctly, the mark means um, Germany or, or West Germany. It's like a lion's head or something. I can't remember what, I, ha I would have to look uh, in my book again. But right under that was the marking uh, 950. And so I, I had to take a second glance because sometimes... Uh, sterling silver is, you know, most of the time, sterling silver is marked 925. So people will uh, quickly look at an item without using a loop and they'll think that the item actually reads 925, but they just didn't look clear enough or maybe it had scratches or maybe it was dirty uh, and they just really didn't see exactly what it said. So this one was marked 950 and uh, I looked at the price tag and they had the watch marked at $15. So I can only assume that they thought that this watch was sterling silver and that's why they were selling it for $15 because it doesn't work. I probably can fix it because it feels like it's just stuck, but uh, just just the platinum alone is gonna make me, uh, you know, some money. I don't really care if it works or not. I would have to, you know, research the, the actual make and see if it's worth putting money into it and getting it fixed. But uh, platinum is definitely valuable. It is a precious metal and it also weighs uh, more than gold and it weighs more than silver. So if you pick up an item and it kind of has uh, a silverish tone, but it's not marked sterling silver and it has any other markings that are 900, 950 or any of the platinum marks, it could possibly be platinum. You still would have to test it, but you know, you're better off buying an item uh, in hopes that it is something instead of just guessing. Now let me go through the, the rest of this list and then we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, just buying stuff from yard sales and estate sales and how you go about doing that. So uh, the next mark is SS. That usually means stainless steel. You might also see it say ST uh, dot S-T-E-E-L. Uh, there's a couple of different abbreviations for stainless steel, but most of the times you're going to be able to quickly identify uh, if it's stainless steel. The next mark is silver, sterling silver. It can be marked silver, it can be marked S silver, or it could be marked sterling silver, or it could just be marked 925, which is the most common mark for sterling silver. Also, 925 Italy or Italy 925. That's the most common mark that you're gonna see nowadays. Let's go to some other markings. 0.800, that's palladium. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but uh, that's what that means. KP, that means carrot plum. Uh, we're gonna get into what that means at the second video. We're not gonna go into depth on on uh, exactly you know what all of these things mean. Uh, GF or GP, now this is an important one. If you see an item that is marked with one of the the markings that we read off at the beginning of the list, like for instance, 14K, but then after that you see a mark that says GP, that means that it's 14 karat gold plated. That is a plated item. Now sometimes these items can still be worth money, especially when we're talking about watches and stuff. 
But then you would have to just look up the actual item, like, you know, look up the watch and things of that nature. But uh, GP or GF. Now, GF means gold fill. Both of those markings mean uh, pretty bad things. It means that it's gold plated or gold filled, and that means that it's not solid gold and it's not going to be worth nowhere near as much money or worth anything at all. It just depends on the item. Uh, on the inside of rings, you might see just numbers. It could be six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Those numbers mean nothing other than the size of the ring. Uh, we're going to get into some other markings on the second video, but those are going to be in regards to diamonds and the size of diamonds. Uh, some jewelers will actually put the carat of the gold on the inside of the ring, and then right next to that, they will also add the, the size of the diamond. So we'll get into that uh, on the second video. It's just too much. Uh, I don't want to, you know... I don't want to fill your brain with too much information right now. I want you to absorb this in. Most likely, the person that's going to benefit from this video the most is somebody that is just trying to get into buying and selling jewelry. I believe that if you're a reseller and you're out there you know, going to yard sales and going to an estate sales, uh, flea markets, and even thrift stores, if you're out there already buying stuff, you might as well have a little bit of knowledge about jewelry so that you can at least take a look at items instead of just passing them up as if they're not even there. I have spoke to so many resellers over the past couple of years and most of them uh, that you know that doesn't you know that they don't care to deal in jewelry and they don't they don't want to learn anything about jewelry because they think it's too hard they think it's too complicated and I just think that that is is absurd I, I honestly do uh, it's not anything against the person it's just because there's so much money to be made in jewelry. Why not just, you know, teach yourself a little bit of knowledge and, and gain a little bit of knowledge so that you can actually, you know, if you come across, a, you know, a jewelry box and you're at a yard sale and the woman's asking $10, $15 for the box of jewelry, you're going to be able to quickly go through that jewelry and identify if there's any gold, if there's any silver, uh, if there's any platinum, if there's any diamonds, whatever the case may be, you're going to be able to identify that immediately and you're going to be able to make a, a, a good conscious decision on buying those items and uh, you're going to be able to make more money. I promise you that. You don't know how many times uh, I've been at a yard sale and I've watched resellers literally go right next to, to you know valuable jewelry and start picking up, you know, five, ten dollar video games when they're sitting next to thousands of dollars worth of gold. You have no clue how many times I've seen that. Uh, I don't know if I ever shared this story before, but uh, I might have in previous videos. Years ago, I purchased a, um, the, the watch is made by, it's a Reverso, and it's made by a company called Le Coltre. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing it correctly, but it's a, a Le Coltre Reverso watch. If you want to go to Google, go to Google, look up this watch. Some of them can be worth thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000. Most of them, depending on the condition and depending on you know the mechanical part of the actual watch can be worth you know six, seven, eight thousand, uh, and some of them in really bad condition can be worth only you know a thousand. But uh, they're definitely really good watches. They're very valuable, very sought after. And uh, I was at a yard sale and I was going through a box of costume jewelry. I had got to the yard sale early. There was only two other people at the yard sale. So I'm going through the box of costume jewelry. There is one box that I'm going through and right next to that box is another box of jewelry. And this is just a big box of jewelry. I'm talking about stuff tangled up, just stuff everywhere. Very common to see at a yard sale and a uh, estate sale. I'm going through the box and right next to the box is a small little children's table and it was full of video games. Most of them were modern games, but it had quite a few video games, 50, 60 games. Uh, so I'm going through the box of jewelry and within about 15 minutes, I start finding good items, sterling silver, uh, a couple of uh, watches, uh, some necklaces. And so I'm digging through the box. And uh, about four or five people started to gather around me. Uh, they were watching me go through these boxes, and I could tell that they wanted to get in there too. But uh, a few resellers walked up, and they immediately went to the video games. 
Now remember, there's another box right next to me. At any point in time, these resellers could have went through that box and found the item that I eventually uh, purchased for $2. They could have found that item because it took me about 15 minutes to fully go through this big box of costume jewelry. Now you might be asking, Chad, why didn't you just buy the whole box? Because the woman wanted too much. I asked her how much she wanted for the box and she said like $150. It was a really big box of costume jewelry. So it really wasn't worth me buying the whole box because I, I, I wanted to just cherry pick everything out of it. She said $150 or it was uh, 2 or $3 an item. I can't remember. So what I ended up doing was I ended up getting a nice good handful of jewelry out of the first box and I pushed it to the side and then I went for the second box. At this point in time, there probably was eight to ten different people at the yard sale and five of those people were resellers these were, were were known resellers i actually know them they buy and sell stuff a couple of them uh, are veterans people that have been in the business a long time and so i pick up that box i go through that box and i find everything uh in that box that i want and i go and buy all of this stuff and one of those items uh turned out to be the le coltre uh, uh reverso uh, watch and it ended up selling a few weeks later after I uh, you know put a little bit of money into it had it serviced had it fixed I ended up putting about 300 into the watch and I ended up selling it for I think it was 6500 or 8500 dollars uh, within a week I think I've actually mentioned it in one of my older videos I might even uh, have, have filmed it I can't remember exactly but uh it's definitely uh you know it's not something that you're gonna run across every day, but that's just, it's, it's just an example to show you that these resellers were more interested in five or $10 video games than they were going through jewelry that you could find thousands of dollars worth of stuff. I ended up selling that watch for thousands of dollars and I also ended up getting other gold, other sterling silver. So I made uh, you probably another thousand dollars on all of the other stuff. And so that is why I believe that it's so important for j even your even your even your niche sellers. Even if I was a niche seller that only dealt in video games. That's all I bought and sold. I still would 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 build myself up enough to where I have enough knowledge to identify a real gold item or a real silver item because you never know when you're going to come across something and why would you pass something up when you can make money on the item? It just doesn't make any sense to me. So anyways, uh, let me talk a little bit more about the, one of the most important things when it comes down to buying jewelry. Now, some of you might disagree, some of you might agree. If you're a reseller like myself and you find most of your items by you know, sourcing at yard sales, garage sales, flea markets, estate sales, thrift stores, things of that nature. If that's the way that you source most of the time, then if you're wanting to buy jewelry, it could be costume jewelry or it could be precious metals like gold and silver, platinum and diamonds and watches and all of that good stuff, you need to become familiar, you need, you need to become uh, a enough familiarized with gold and silver to somewhat be able to identify it without being able to test it. That's the most important part. And so when when I was about 13 or 14, my father started to, sh to show me, uh, you know, jewelry. He started to show me gold and silver. And he started to show me how to use a loop. And he started to show me, you know, how to test this and how to test that. There's numerous ways out there to test jewelry. I'm going to show you a few of those ways in the next video. We're going to talk about diamond testing. We're going to talk about testing uh, gold for, for the purity to see if it's 10 karat, 14 karat, 18 karat, 24 karat. So we're going to talk about all of that in the next video. But, you know, the one thing that my dad taught me at a very young age is to become familiar with gold, to hold it, to feel it, know the weight, what should gold weigh compared to an item the same size of gold, if you had a quarter and one quarter was solid gold and the other quarter was just a regular quarter, the one that's made out of solid gold is going to weigh a lot more. Gold is heavier than other metals. So those are the kinds of things that you need to teach yourself. 
you need to become familiar enough with gold, with the silver, so that you can identify it just by looking at it. Now, I'm not telling you that you're going to become so good where you're going to be able to identify any item just by staring at it. All I'm trying to say is that instead of you taking gambles and buying a box of costume jewelry, you should be able to go through that jewelry and determine if the odds are against you or in favor of you. And so that's all I'm saying. I don't really like gambling. I don't ever try to take gambles unless I really think that it's worth it. So when I'm buying jewelry, unless it's just dirt cheap, if I'm looking at a box of costume jewelry and I think that there might be some good stuff in it and I ask how much that box of jewelry is and they tell me $2, I'm just gonna gamble. I don't care at that point. I'll spend $2. If there's nothing in it, I'll throw it away. I'll donate it. I'll give it to my daughter to play dress up, whatever the case may be. But when we're talking about $100 or $200 or even $1,000, you know, you want to be able to go through some items and kind of uh, identify it just by the way that it looks, the way that it feels, the way that it's made, the maker's marks, things of that nature. And so that's what I believe is the most important. Now, when you're buying jewelry, from a private party and it's listed on Craigslist or it's on Facebook Marketplace, whatever the case may be. If you're meeting somebody or they're coming to you to sell you a watch like this, then all you do is test it. At that point, you, you have your testing equipment and you just test the item. But you know you can't do that at a yard sale. You can't do that at an estate sale. Uh, I mean, well, you could do it at an estate sale if the item's priced and uh, you're not going to be doing much negotiation or, or they know what they have. If you're at an estate sale and they have it priced and it's a 14 karat gold watch, then go ahead, whip out your tester, tell them that you would like to test it and see if they agree. Most of the times they're going to agree, uh, but sometimes you'll run into people that will not agree and they'll say, no, we don't want the item damaged. Uh, but there's always a way to test an item without damaging it much. So uh, that will be on the next video. We'll go into depth on testing things. And uh, I think the next video will be a lot more uh, informative. I think you're going to be able to learn a lot more. This was just a short, brief introduction into buying jewelry. So if you're watching this video and you're interested into, uh, you know, and you're interested into uh, learning more about buying jewelry and things of that nature, definitely come check out my next video. Hopefully I'll have it up within the next couple of days. Uh, also, I'm going to be putting out more content throughout the week. Hopefully I go to yard sales and estate sales this weekend and maybe I'll be able to make a uh, sourcing video. But uh, yeah, I'm back to making videos. I'm back to making content. I really appreciate all of my subscribers and all of my followers who reached out to me and uh, I got a few, actually I got quite a few messages from different people, you know, asking if I was okay, asking if I was going to be back to making videos, all of that good stuff. I want to say thank you to all of you that, that reached out to me. You know who you are. Uh, for all of you that are new to my channel that just stopped by to watch this video, I hope you liked the video. Please hit the thumbs up. Also, don't forget, hit that subscribe button and make sure you turn on the bell notifications. Uh, until next time, folks, I'm out of here. I'm the reseller Rockefeller. Peace.